So, so let me tell you a little bit about the Triton uh, Fluid Management System and the need that it addresses. Um, this actually started as one of the biodesign classic uh, programs. Uh, the student uh, was Siddharth um, Satish, who's the founder of the company. And Sid was a student in the biodesign class, and he was looking at needs finding. So he was in the operating rooms just watching what was happening and recognized that during surgery, uh, very frequently there was lots of blood loss, but uh, no one was ever really able to quantitate how much blood loss. It was purely a guess. Uh, the surgeon and the anesthesiologist at the end of the case would sort of take their best educated guesses and negotiate a number. Yet that was a very important number that was uh, very, you know, um, impactful to, uh, to the outcome of the patient and what they did in terms of treatment of that patient. So Siddharth came up with an idea using a standard off-the-shelf mobile technology, an iPad uh, at the time, to be able to just take pictures of the bloody sponges and the canister and developed an algorithm that could convert that into an actual quantitative number. So with very simply by just scanning in sponges or canisters, he could actually give a very accurate number uh, and be able to uh, present that to the surgeon and the anesthesiologist. So we were in sort of an unusual space because at the time the FDA really hadn't issued any final guidance documents on what they were going to do with mobile technology. And I would go back and just um, remind folks that this started, the, the development of the product started in about 2011. Um, we did our first filing in 2012 and the um, FDA had had one mobile app that they had um, cleared in 2011 and then came out with a draft guidance in 2011 for mobile apps, but that didn't get finalized until a year and a half later in 2013. You know, it was our expectation this would be a relatively simple, straightforward process, mainly because the product never touched the patient. It wasn't an implant, it wasn't a tool, it literally took a picture of something and gave a number. Um, so our, our scent at the beginning was this would be hopefully a relatively straight process. The regulatory pathway in our mind was very traditional and specific. Um, there was a predicate that we had and we had planned to follow. It was the sponge counter, which was a class one exempt product. And it, we were going to follow a, a traditional stepwise process to develop a first product and move that forward with additional changes and improvements. And we did follow that path, and we did quite we well did. through the first two 510K submissions yeah. that were approved relatively quickly. And we learned a lot and made some relationships with the agency and tried to develop our trust. Uh, but then again, as we came to the third submission, uh, all of a sudden, uh, all, uh, all things changed very quickly on the agency's part. We thought we had a, a reasonable predicate. We pulled up a few different ones. We even tried to work with them on you know, establishing as a class two device and finding a class two predicate. Uh, but even with that, they, uh, they balked and they eventually said they really wanted this to come through as in the de novo process. And my experience is when the FDA tells you that's what they want, uh, it's usually better just to follow what they want because it could be a long, drawn-out discussion which will end up with the same results in the end anyway. You're better right. off just sort of accepting early on and trying to, trying to go with their directions. In, in all defense, for them, this was a learning process for them. They had never right. really done mobile technology. They were trying to understand what to do and what was required, what the risks were. Um, so it was a learning process for the agency and for us at the time.